Um, okay. Let's begin the briefing. Operator Eugene Solano, I'll be keeping you up to date. We've got news that an invading LASAP squadron has just taken off from the Puna Plains en route for an attack on our position, Aubrey Base. From their perspective, this attack is the final nail in our collective coffin. After all, this is the only base that hasn't fallen under their control. I guess we can consider ourselves lucky. It looks like the enemy has gotten a little overconfident and sent only a small attack force. Griffith Squadron, prepare for launch immediately. Fly around the mountains and avoid enemy radar. Oh, I forgot. The enemy squadron consists mainly of bombers supported by several fighters. Please protect this base and destroy the enemy bombers. If everything goes well, we should be able to get the upper hand on the enemy in this area. All right, please prepare for launch. Let's pay back the LASAP forces with at least one defeat. One final thing. During combat, my code name will be Crux. I will keep you up to date on the battle situation, so please pay attention to your radio. Break 
The mission was, was a success. The destruction of the enemy bombers will help keep an enemy invasion of Aubrey base at bay. However, we also suffered serious losses. They, there's no way anyone could ever call this mission a success. I'm sorry. I couldn't do anything to save them. So that's the super weapon Laysap used to take over all of Aurelia in only 10 days. Who could have imagined that they possessed such destructive power? Let this be a symbol of the fury borne by our countrymen towards Aurelia. Such was the impassioned speech of Laysath's commander, Diego Gaspar Navarro, as images of the Aurelian squadron's destruction over Cape Aubrey played in the background. A day later, his gravelly voice continued to echo through my hungover brain. October. One year after the cessation of the Democratic Republic of Laysath Civil War. After the Civil War, Laysath began to set their sights on their peaceful neighbor, the Federal Republic of Aurelia, claiming retribution for years of exploitation. The invasion suddenly began. With the ever-present threat of the cloaked airborne fortress, Glapemere, looming overhead, there was little time to react to the few concerns raised about the validity of the war. Such was the speed at which all of Aurelia fell under Laysath's control. Well, not everything has fallen into their hands, but it's only a matter of time. Looking out over the capital, Gaius Tower is both home to Laysath's central command and the very symbol of its power. It was originally intended to be a symbol of Aurelia's peace. <laughs> How ironic. As I looked up at the sun traveling the same old path across the sky, the rays burned my tired eyes. Damn it. I just wish I could finish covering this completely one-sided war and head back home. I'll never get used to being in the Southern Hemisphere with its backward seasons. The Gleipnir was last confirmed heading southeast across the Puna Plains. However, we lost all trace of it shortly after. Unfortunately, Aurelia's information network can provide no further details at this time. We'll just have to take what we can get. The airborne fortress Gleipnir nearly wiped out our entire attack force. Even with you, sir, our remaining aerial attack strength is severely limited. We no longer have the necessary manpower or supplies to pursue Gleipnir. In addition, there are reports of enemy forces gathering at Port Patterson. If we don't move soon, it will only be a matter of time before they attack from behind. Given the situation, we are left with only one plan of attack. On the Puna Plains lying between Aubrey Base and Port Patterson, Laysath forces have hastily constructed a resupply base to house the large quantity of supplies needed to support their troops. Attack Puna Base. Destroy all park bombers and base facilities. Take away the enemy's ability to fight. If you succeed, we'll gain an important foothold for an attack on Port Patterson. And what's more, we'll gain the supplies we need to win this fight. 
Unless we succeed in taking this base, that's it for our supplies. Please don't fail, sir. Retreating LASAF forces have abandoned Puna base. The base, including all provisions stored there now belong to us. Now we'll be able to provide backup support for our troops. Thank you. 
The battle to retake Port Patterson is about to begin. Our scattered forces have come together for this battle. They're few in number, but we've managed to assemble a small ground force. However, the Laysath fleet continues to gather in Port Patterson, and the presence of the Transportation Corps has also been confirmed. Having lost Puna base, it appears Laysath now intends to shuttle in troops and supplies overseas. If any more ships dock at Port Patterson, enemy strength will become more than our ground troops can handle. In order to prevent this, we need you to launch a preliminary strike on Port Patterson. Destroy all enemy supply vessels, landing ships, and freighters. In particular, try to keep as many enemy landing ships from entering the port as possible. Battle supplies must not reach the enemy. The number of enemy landing ships inside the port will be displayed on the MPG in the upper right hand corner of your HUD. If the MPG reaches the max level, our forces will no longer be able to retake Port Patterson. This time, a substantial enemy counterattack is to be expected. It seems the loss of Puna base has put them on guard. Please be careful. Griffith One, you are cleared for takeoff. Griffith One, altitude restrictions cancelled. Return to your mission. Good luck. to Griffith One. Check your MPG on the right side of the hut. The MPG will display the number of landing ships from the port. Please pay careful attention to the MPG during this mission. So you're Griffith One, huh? I'm Major Bertman, Ground Force Commander. There are landing ships within the enemy fleet. We'll lose the battle if a battalion is allowed to make it ashore. Do not allow more than three landing ships to enter the port. We'll be risking our necks out here with you. Let's take back Port Patterson. Huh? Wait, I've got something on radar. Put the city on high alert. I don't want to see so much as a kitten out on those streets. Just make sure that bridge is raised. Enemy ship destroyed. AA guns destroyed.
We've succeeded in destroying the enemy fleet gathered in Port Patterson. Our ground troops scored a major victory by using the chaos caused by our attack to storm in and secure the port. We freed Port Patterson from the hands of the enemy. It's still kind of hard to believe. The emblem of the Southern Cross. It was on that very day that the aircraft bearing the mark of the Southern Hemisphere brought about the defeat of Laysath forces. But the story barely made the news, and the army showed no apparent reaction. Almost nightly, Laysath's commanding officer, Diego Gaspar Navarro, plays host to grand banquets within Gaius Tower. This evening, he is once again proudly trumpeting the glory of his airborne fortress. I've heard the speech so many times, it feels like I wrote it. Which, in a way, is a good thing, because it lets me concentrate on enjoying the food instead. As I gazed out the window at the night sky, I felt as if even the phases of the moon were somehow at odds with those of the Northern Hemisphere. The words of a fellow reporter, who fancied himself a connoisseur of fine wine, really got me thinking about the price of the glass of wine in my hand. One glass of it is roughly equivalent to several years of a Laysathian citizen's salary. Haven't the long years of civil war left Laysath an impoverished and war-torn nation? Whatever the case, much is unclear about the flow of money in Laysath. Ever since I arrived here, I've only covered stories the military had approved. However, this particular mystery just might be worth investigating on my own. The idea was nothing more than the product of an idle mind. At least at the time. Uh, okay, let's get started with a report of the situation. I think our best option under the circumstances would be to head towards Santa Elva. Santa Elva is a strategic location that we have to pass through to get to the capital, Griswold. However, there are several other strategic points on the way to Santa Elva. Which points you choose and in what order you do so is up to you. It looks like your decisions will affect the course of this battle. I know it's an immense responsibility, but there's no one else to count on. We're relying on you to get us through this. It appears that the enemy's Miller unit is gathering at Kings Hill. It looks like they're trying to take back Port Patterson. I wonder what they're up to. Next, we have reports that the Allied Davis unit is cut off at Stand Canyon. 
Gleipnir took off from Puna base and is currently standing by at Terminus Island. With the long strike range of the Gleipnir, there's not much our forces can do. It appears that the enemy is moving towards Stan Canyon to eliminate our remaining forces. We'll need those remaining forces in our attack on Santa Elva, so I think we should probably send help. If left alone, uh, they'll be helpless against the aerial fortress. Just like what happened to us at Cape Aubrey. Also, Santa Elva is a key location for the enemy, and I think they'll concentrate their forces there. We'll have major problems if they send in their aerial fortress. I'll give you more details once you decide on a route. Please tell me which route you plan to take. The Gleipnir is now positioned above Terminus Island. It is using the island as a resupply base and as a staging point for long-range attacks on Stand Canyon. The troops stranded at Stand Canyon are vital to the upcoming assault on Santa Elva. But they're pinned down as long as the Gleipnir's assault is allowed to continue. Something must be done about the situation and soon. Analysis of the SWBM attack at Cape Aubrey has shown that the shock wave of the missile dissipates before reaching ground level. Hoping to utilize this weakness, the remaining Aurelian fleet has gathered for a counter-assault on the airborne fortress. We have been informed that the assault will begin as soon as we are ready. How shall we proceed, sir?
Radar is unable to track the glade near while it is using optical camouflage. Missile lock-ons are unstable. You'll have to use your aim to take it down. Fortress missile launched. Estimated 
time to impact, 15 seconds. Estimated time to impact, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, impact! We've succeeded in destroying the Gleipnir's SWBM. The surrounding area is no longer in any danger. Unfortunately, the Gleipnir escaped, but this victory has given us hope. I'm starting to feel like retaking Santa Elva is fastly becoming a reality. We have an emergency situation. The Miller unit has moved from Kings Hill for an assault on Port Patterson. They reclaim the city almost immediately. We've also confirmed the transport of supplies from the port to Santa Elva via Kings Hill. I had no idea this was in their plan. Uh, sorry about that. On with the update. The Gleipnir has withdrawn from the combat zone and is now in Santa Elva. Furthermore, with the destruction of the Gleipnir's SWBM, Long-range assaults are no longer a threat. LASAP's Miller unit has taken control of Port Patterson. Your mission is to take it back. Reports say that the enemy unit swooped in on Port Patterson from Kings Hill, 
completely overtaking our forces stationed there. We should have paid more attention to the enemy's movements. This position must be retaken as soon as possible. Port Patterson is an important refueling station. Without access to fuel, our forces won't be able to carry on the battle much longer. Intelligence confirms that the Miller unit plans to use the port complex to shield themselves from our attack. We need to clear them out, but attacking with indiscretion will only result in damage to the facilities. Without the facilities intact, Port Patterson is useless. Use utmost discretion in capturing the port.
Fire? He's just bluffing. Hold your position! He's coming this way! Hurry up and get here! We've succeeded in ousting the Miller unit hiding within the port complex and have once again taken control of Port Patterson. This should also relieve some of the stress on our fuel reserves. Luckily, the city survived the assault with surprisingly little damage. Still, the ferocity of the enemy counterattack was completely unexpected. The enemy can take back a point as soon as you turn your back. We'll have to be more cautious of the enemy's strategy from now on. Intelligence reports that LACEF forces are airlifting munitions from Port Patterson to Santa Elva. We think the munitions are for the airborne fortress Gleipnir. At this moment, there is no information on the enemy transport core formation. Regardless, the mission will be considered a failure if even one of the enemy transport planes escapes out of the combat zone. Destroying all transport planes before that happens will be the main focus of this mission. How do you want to proceed, sir?
decoy. Look harder for the real transport.
We've succeeded in shooting down all enemy transport aircraft bound for Santa Elva. This should prevent the enemy from gaining any new ground for a while. Future missions are sure to be less dangerous thanks to your efforts. Let's hope this victory helps make our future battles a little easier too. Allied ground forces are stranded at Stan Canyon. They are members of the Davis unit, who were en route to an assault on Santa Elva when they were cut off from the main force. The troops have already been surrounded by enemy forces and are taking heavy fire. There's no time to lose. With the threat of a long-range enemy attack passed, an Allied air unit was deployed for rescue, but it doesn't look like the troops can hold out much longer. Try to hold back enemy forces until the rescue unit arrives. I believe it's our duty to protect the Davis unit.
It appears that a rescue unit has successfully extracted the stranded Davis unit. Although the unit has suffered terrible losses, thankfully, they've been saved from complete annihilation. Several aircraft parts were discovered in the ruins of the enemy base. Head over to the hangar and take a look when you get a chance. I'll now go over the details of our mission to retake Santa Elva, a city vital to the enemy's transportation network. If we succeed in retaking the city, our capital Griswold will be within reach. It seems that the damage the Gleipnir bore from our attack over Terminus Island is now being repaired here in Santa Elva. The previous battle was proof enough of the ability of individual fighters to effectively strike at the Gleipnir. So all ground forces that run the risk of becoming a target will hold their position here. Enemy ground forces are most likely prepared for any kind of assault. But with the Gleipnir unable to fly, now is the time to strike. Even the Gleipnir wouldn't risk killing their own troops stationed at the base by firing the short-range cannon. It looks like there's no escape for them this time, sir.
more than conventional weapons to take the bastard down.
repair is finished. It can't be. The airborne fortress is... The Gleipnir is no more. Shortly after our victory, ground forces successfully retook Santa Elva. The Santa Elva victory is fantastic news. But even more so, the defeat of the Gleipnir is sure to boost morale and give us a strategic advantage in this war. Next, we liberate the capital Griswold. We've already come this far, sir. Unthinkable! The chatter of the nightly parties fell into silence. In place of the sumptuous banquet, weapons to protect the capital were rolled in. Griswold is in turmoil over the shocking news, but who would have thought that underneath the chaos lay an even greater story? Aurelia's exploitation of Laysath was all a ruse. In fact, Aurelia had been Laysath's largest benefactor in aid. The truth remained hidden from the public while any aid meant for food was spent on arms. Why did this happen? Why was a lavish party held to boast the performance of their newest weapon? The trail of money surrounding Diego Navarro would lead me to the answer. Diego Navarro is not only Laysath's commanding officer, but also controls their arms industry. He has used continued conflict as a means to amass an enormous fortune. This war was conceived as a replacement for the Civil War to further increase arms sales. I can't help but wonder how much of this truth the soldiers risking their lives for Laysath really know. The classified documents contained much more than just information on the Airborne Fortress. The transfer of financial revenue and commodities were also recorded in great detail. What does all of this have to do with Laysath's commanding officer Diego Navarro? Even after all that's happened, why does he still seem so naturally at ease? I've unwittingly found myself fearing for the safety of the Southern Cross. All right, let me brief you on the main locations on the route to Griswold. Sir, please choose a route. First, remnant enemy soldiers are regrouping at the Kalana Steps and are planning an attack on Santa Elva. They currently aren't a threat, but we're curious as to what they're planning. I guess we're not much different from them in size or strength. The enemy special forces skill unit has set up camp at Sachana Air Base. They're not a squad you want to take on directly, but they're currently busy preparing to send reinforcements to the Kalana Steps. This might be the perfect time to catch them off guard. It appears that Laysap forces are shipping supplies to a large-scale manufacturing plant in Montebris. It seems that they're manufacturing something, but there is a large radar facility close by on Mount Nevera. The Nevera Jammer is located there, and we're unable to monitor their movements. The jamming extends as far as Griswold, so we need to do something about it. Although we really need to find out what's going on at Monte Breeze as well. Our capital is not far ahead. 
However, Griswold is heavily fortified and protected by the Mesen Cannon. Fierce resistance is expected, but we must pull together and take back Griswold. We are planning a surprise attack to recapture our country's largest airbase, the Sachana Air Base. The base, with its large supply warehouses, is a crucial strategic point, as well as a vital supply channel. By securing Sachana Air Base, our forces will gain a necessary staging point for a combined Allied assault on the capital. At present, the Laysath Air Force is grounded but they're mobilizing to aid ground forces fighting on the Kalana steppes. The Skilla unit is also rumored to be stationed at Sachana Air Base. They are an elite team, highly skilled in anti-aircraft tactics. A head-on confrontation must be avoided at all costs. Therefore, we have devised a plan to penetrate deep into enemy territory and strike while their attention is still focused on the Kalana steppes. A sweeping radar net lies between here and Sachana Air Base. However, by flying at an altitude of 1,000 feet, you should be able to make it through undetected. A sudden and precise strike on the base will greatly increase our chances of winning without risking a head-on confrontation. Avoid flying over enemy patrol boats on the river or you'll be spotted. Destroy them before that happens. Also, be sure to find the lower 1,000 feet. Keep an eye on your HUD and avoid the enemy radar net. Patrol boats, report. This is patrol. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's a quiet night.
Griffith 1, begin landing checks. You're clear to land. Three miles to touchdown. Two miles to touchdown. One mile to touchdown. You're coming in too fast. Slow down. Perfect, sir. Stand by and prepare for your next sortie. The surprise attack was a success. Sachana Air Base is back in our hands. Air power from the base will be a vital asset, especially in the battle to retake Griswold. I have the feeling the day of our capital's liberation is not far off. We have obtained intelligence that Laysef forces on the Kalana steppes are increasing by the hour. With the Sachana Air Base in our hands, Laysef has abandoned its Air Force dispatch. However, the enemy is concentrating ground troops near these ruins and appears to be preparing to attack Santa Elva. Ignoring this threat could prove to be costly later on. It would be best to take action now and be rid of this threat once and for all. The presence of special forces within their ranks has also been confirmed. If enemy special forces are allowed to make their way inside Santa Elva, the situation could turn ugly.
destroyed.
Enemy ground forces have been all but wiped out. For the time being, we can turn our attention away from the Kalana steps and towards more pressing matters. Several members of the special forces were among the soldiers who surrendered, and we were able to gain invaluable intel about their mission objectives. Had they succeeded in infiltrating Santa Elva and carrying out their mission, the city could have been in a terrible situation. It's good to see you made it back, sir. A recon team has infiltrated Monte Breeze and uncovered suspect enemy movement. It appears that Laysaf used several of the large industrial complexes scattered throughout the area to produce some type of weapon. Unfortunately, jamming from Mount Nevra is preventing us from gathering any further details. The presence of numerous transport aircraft, however, has led us to believe that whatever the cargo is, they plan on taking it to Griswold. There isn't enough time to prevent the transport aircraft from taking off, but we should be able to utilize their radar jamming to shield our approach. If the enemy succeeds in escaping from the combat zone, we won't be able to follow. A lightning strike before they have time to react should prevent their escape. However, enemy jamming will render both radar and radio useless during the operation. Instead, Recon has made arrangements to transmit the position of the transport aircraft via infrared. Your mission is to work with the recon unit to track and shoot down all transport aircraft. The mission will be considered a failure if any escape. We don't know what cargo is stowed within the transports, but there can be no doubt that it doesn't bode well for us. Thank <laughs> you. 
nearing the river. Can you make it over this way? Control tower, we're leaving here now. Destination Griswold, right? Destination Griswold. All transport aircraft that took off from Monte Breeze have been destroyed. They were trying to escape with MBSRs. Apparently, they were used to intensify the Maison Cannon's beam. It gives me chills just to think about what might have happened had those things been delivered. Lasath has taken advantage of Mount Nevera's height and built a large-scale jamming station known as the Nevera Jammer, with enough power to effectively blanket the capital and all surrounding areas. Responsibility for taking care of the jamming station before it further interferes with the war effort has fallen into our hands. An array of high-performance SAMs and AA guns provide the Nevera Jammer with a formidable defense. The high-performance SAMs are difficult to avoid, even for the most advanced aircraft. You're done for the second you fly within range. ECM pods are of no use here either. The high-performance AA guns are also capable of shooting bombs and even long-range missiles out of the sky. We must first deal with this threat before we can move in for an attack on the jamming facility itself. Therefore, we must destroy the electric power transmitter that is providing them with energy. The location of this transmitter remains unknown, but a string of old power lines on Mount Nevera may just point the way. The transmitter's power output will be displayed on your HUD. Make sure the power output is at zero before moving in to attack the jammer.
We've destroyed the Nevera Jammer and freed up the airwaves. Now we have a clear view of Griswold. Sir, let's end this war. We've succeeded in ending radar interference for Mount Nevera. We are now better prepared for an assault on Griswold. Our mission is the liberation of Griswold. I'll explain the details. Griswold is protected by the Meson Cannon. The cannon would have posed a much greater threat had Laysap succeeded in delivering the MBSRs. Thanks to your efforts in stopping their delivery, our ground forces should be able to approach the capital unhindered. If Allied forces are able to make their way to the center of the Atmos Ring and into Gaius Tower, they will be able to take control of the enemy central command and free the city. It will be our duty to support the troops from above. Lysaf's army is prepared for us. We expect this to be a fierce battle for both sides. Although the energy output of the Meson cannon is unstable, it can still inflict considerable damage to any allied units caught within firing range. The more damage we inflict to the Meson cannon, the easier it will be for our troops to take the city. The capital's liberation is finally within our grasp. Sir, please decide the course of action.
Griswold's been liberated. With the loss of their central command, Laysath forces have begun to pull out of Aurelia. The streets of Griswold are overflowing with citizens celebrating the defeat of the Laysath oppressors. Even soldiers have joined in the celebration. Sir, the people won't soon forget your brave actions that led us here. We've done it, sir. With each passing day, news of new Aurelian victories came pouring in. The Southern Cross's actions spurred the surviving Aurelian troops to battle. Commanding Officer Diego Navarro has retreated and is currently being pursued by special forces. No one would have guessed that a ragtag band of soldiers smaller than a single unit could have put up such fierce resistance. December 10th, several days after the liberation of Griswold, I made my way towards one of the many cities busy recovering from the ravages of the war. Despite my usual misgivings, I could feel myself getting excited at the prospect of meeting the Southern Cross. But when I reached the base, I saw his emblem already gleaming in the skies above. I had heard that today was their first break in a while, but something must have changed that. I merely watched as the jet's contrail stretched far off into the distant sky. Suddenly. I was overcome by a strong sense of dread. The misappropriated financial and material resources were on a scale much greater than the airborne fortress alone could account for. Would the weapon at Griswold prove to be the missing piece to the puzzle? Updated situation report. The forces hunting Laysaf Commander Diego Navarro have been decimated at the Danern Straits. It appears that Laysaf has developed a new type of attack aircraft. I can't believe they had a working prototype from the aerial fortress. Sorry, back to the report. The new attack aircraft is named Fenrir, according to Laysaf reports. From the satellite intel gathered, it appears that the aircraft took off from Sentry Island. We received information from intelligence services that there appears to be a factory on the island. There are two routes to Sentry Island. First, Laysath has a squadron of ace pilots, the Alex Squadron, situated near the Danern Straits. They are currently headed for Sentry Island. If a pilot of that caliber were to pilot the new craft, we would have a lot of trouble on our hands. Another route is Cobalt Cave, the location of enemy research facilities. It is believed that they are preparing to move some sort of weapon. We don't know the details, but it is most likely a weapon to mount to Fenrir. The ace pilots and the unknown weapon are both major concerns but we can only deal with one of these threats. You must stop whatever Laysath has planned. You are about to enter Laysath territory. We don't have much intel to go on, but you need to decide how to proceed.
We have learned that Lasaf is using Cobalt Cave to secretly conduct tests on a new weapon. Intelligence states that the weapon is to be mounted to the special assault aircraft Fenrir. It appears that Lasaf got wind of our movements and is moving the operation to Archelon Fortress. We don't exactly know much about this weapon, but we need to put an end to its development ASAP. Simply destroying the transport frigates won't suffice. You must also destroy all warehouses on the island. We've been warned, however, that the warehouses are loaded with explosive chemicals. Fly up and out as soon as you hit a warehouse, or you'll be caught in the ensuing explosion. During the mission, Allied amphibious units will be deployed to the island to gather intel for the upcoming assault on Archelon Fortress.
We succeeded in preventing the delivery of LASAF's new experimental weapon, as well as destroying their research facility. The Allied landing force has apprehended an enemy scientist who is seeking asylum. He has informed us that the cargo LASAF attempted to fly off Cobalt Cave was in fact a microwave weapon of some kind. To think that they were able to develop such a device. It's a good thing we interrupted the delivery before it was too late. The Ace Alex Squadron has moved from the Dannern Straits to Archelon Fortress. There is no doubt they were sent there to intercept us. Reinforcements from Laysath were also sent. It appears they've just arrived at the Dannern Straits. Laysath has deployed multiple air and naval units to defend against our assault on Archelon Fortress. Our military satellites have already confirmed large-scale aerial movement. The LASAF fleet 
is also thought to be heading there via the Danern Straits. The fleet will pose an immeasurable threat to our attack plans if it is not immediately stopped. I highly recommend attacking now, before the fleet arrives at Archelon Fortress.
We have successfully prevented the Laysath fleet from docking at Archelon Fortress. It was a difficult battle, but we've weakened the enemy's hold over the fort. Archelon Fortress is the final obstacle standing between us and total victory, sir. We've advanced within striking distance of Archelon Fortress. Fenrir, the whole reason they started this war is being made right here on this base. It's our duty to wipe this base clear off the map. We've received information that Laysaf's elite Alex squadron is now stationed within the fortress. Fenrir's superior combat capabilities and optical camouflage combined with the skills of Laysaf's elite ace pilot make this threat too dangerous to approach head-on. Disabling the optical camouflage is our only chance for success. A LASAF scientist we apprehended at the facility on Cobalt Cave has informed us that due to Fenrir's compact size, it must rely on microwaves emitted from the nearby base's electrical transmitter to power its optical camouflage. The same forces that fought alongside us at Cobalt Cave will make sure the gate to the electrical transmitter is open. If you succeed in destroying the facility, you should be able to handle Fenrir just like any other fighter. We don't have much time to pull this off, so make sure you're there when the gate is opened. Sir, we've succeeded in freeing Aurelia. The war should have already been over for us. But someone has to put an end to this. Just make sure you come back alive.
As I wrote down the words that would reveal the truth to the world, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. It said that the only true winners in any war are those who achieve what they intended. Diego Navarro had left Aurelia's capital in defeat, yet his goal of increasing arms exports had been achieved. It seemed as though he may be the true victor in this war. After returning to his homeland, it appears that he now plans to unveil the ultimate weapon before his countrymen. Satellite images of the Archelon Fortress will provide the backdrop for his speech to the world. Such audacity must come from his confidence in this ultimate weapon, Fenrir. There's no such thing as a foolproof plan, I whispered to myself as I watched the sun slowly wheel across the sky overhead. Even the country's hero, still in the heat of battle, hadn't returned home for the celebration of victory. The Southern Cross will ensure Navarro's plan ends in failure. Ain't that right?
Landing unit. We've arrived at the front gate. All right, it opened! What's that? Oh, crap! It's Fenrir! And there's a pilot inside! He's taking off! We can't go after him. Take care of him for us. The amphibious unit has opened Archelon Fortress's front gate. There are still working Fenrir's inside. If we let even one escape, they're sure to take data from this battle back to Lazaf. If that happens, then this war will truly never end. Enter the fortress. Take down and destroy Fenrir. This is the landing unit. Sorry we couldn't deal with him ourselves. Go get him for us. Oh no, the gate is going to close. The Southern Cross will be trapped inside. We have no choice. We must withdraw. We leave it up to you to end this. weapon Fenrir were ripped by explosions and engulfed in flames. While these images flashed on the screen, the eyes of the press watched as the enraged citizens of Laysath stormed in on commanding officer Diego Navarro. When the rage of the thousands had finally subsided, it is said that there was nothing left but the shattered remains of Fenrir. It's ironic that the stage for the unveiling of his greatest triumph would be his ultimate undoing. When it was all over, I tried to get an interview with the Southern Cross, only to find that he had already returned to Cape Aubrey. He said he's never really liked hot weather. Eugene Solano, the young radio operator, answered sheepishly. Peace had returned to Griswold, and it was now covered in the colors of the Christmas season. I went ahead and bought myself a figure of Santa, the kind that I could only find here. Albert, 
I thought you couldn't stand the Southern Hemisphere. A fellow reporter said to me as he saw the Santa figure, a memento of this Southern Hemisphere of backward seasons. I like the design, I said as I embarrassingly showed it to him. It bore the emblem of the Southern Cross. Thank you.